Our guest on this Guided Talks needs a little introduction. Tom Peters is one of the world's most respected management gurus. He's an author, business expert, thought leader, speaker. New for 2020 is the Excellence Now campaign. What you are doing right now will be the hallmark of your entire career. Robert and Tom discuss the Excellent Now campaign, plus why women are so much better than men in business, has COVID accelerated the need for extreme humanism, has COVID emphasised how wrong we seem to have got it, plus much more. Hello and welcome to the Guide to Talks, Grow Your Digital Agency Talks. And today I'm absolutely delighted to have with me a gentleman who needs no introduction. It's Mr. Tom Peters. You're you're not going to spend 15 minutes telling everybody the highlight <laughs> of my life so that I can you know feel like a superstar or something well we, i I, kn- I know you're a superstar tom we know you're a superstar that's and... it no i i there's there's nothing there's nothing that i hate more in a live speech where i've got 35 minutes to speak and the introducer you know god bless her or him for heaven's sakes takes the first 10 minutes you know giving my grandmother's maiden name Although I have to say that, that you know, Tom Peters, you know, it, it's like there are uh, Tom, you know, there aren't many names like Tom, Michael, um, and a few other names where people actually know who you're talking about. So, it's, so you are one of those people who's known by their first name, I think. And relative to what I wrote in my new book, we are going to have a national holiday when the number of women CEOs of Fortune 500 companies surpasses the number of Fortune 500 CEOs whose first name is Jim. <laughs> well, I think you're right. And in fact, I was talking earlier today about 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 the madness. I mean, the madness in in our industry, in every industry, that they're just you know, although everyone talks a good diversity talk, everyone talks a good women first talk, how, in, in fact, you know, when you look at, when we look at how many people we interview, when we look how many pe- how many people we bring on stage, you know, at conferences, unless we do it deliberately, it's it's a white male world. Yes, yeah, Shelley and I, my colleague Shelley, who you know, we were doing something, I think it was out, of India, and it was a part of a series, and we were given the list of the names of other interviewees, and we just put our foot down. You know, I said, I'm not going to join your party uh, unless you will increase significantly, in particular, the number of women uh, that are part of this set. And, you know, that, and, and the, the worst part maybe it's better than it was, is the retort when people are saying, okay, I'll add an extra woman to the board, but there are no qualified women. I mean, that's when you want to punch somebody (laughs) non-virtually. But it is, I mean... Okay, oh my God, it worked perfectly. F to F, fist to face. Fist to face. <laughs> very good, very good. So uh, let's let's get to let's get to the to the, to the grist of this. So uh, excellence now. I mean, excellence now seems to be uh, the culmination of your work. It's almost like a like a dare I, dare I say it, and I don't mean it disrespectfully. It's almost like a a legacy work. It's a it's a it's a significant piece of work in terms of of putting together your thoughts about how we should be doing business? Well, it's not, uh, you not only didn't do something disrespectful, you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, A lot of people suggested that I do a memoir, which I thought was incredibly egocentric, A, And B, if you do a memoir, it should be truthful. And there are a bunch of important events that I'm not terribly proud of. Uh, And 
I have a neighbor who's one of the top social psychologists in the world, and she's doing something. And she said, do what I'm doing, a memoir of ideas. And that essentially is the case. And as I say over and over in the new book, and I'm actually serious, this is my 19th book. And despite my advanced age, I continue to be greedy. And so I would love to have you buy all 19 books so that my royalty stream would be improved. <laughs> but the secret is all 19 books say the same damn thing. And, uh, you know, within some limits, it's, you know, it's, it's true. What was, what was spectacular about the first one in search of excellence was, you know, we said business strategy is not everything. People are important too. And the whole world said, oh my God, that's one of the greatest insights. That's <laughs> biblical. You know, who said that first, Matthew or Mark or Luke or John? And now I've written my 19th book, 18 plus 21, 39 years later. And, you know, my one liner or two liners, and you are not one of them, is I've done a ton of podcasts. And the first question is always, Tom, you talk a lot about people, to which my response is not what I really want it to be. I was in the Navy and I can swear like a sailor, but my, my response relative to our conversation is, what the hell else is there? And what the hell else is there is, and I know who our audience is within you know, to some significant degree, what the hell else, else is there is an appropriate response for a high tech firm, a software writing firm, as it is for somebody who is running a hotel. Uh, it's, it's always all about people and every aspect is all about people. And, you know, we were talking about the women's thing. Um, I don't remember the author's name, which is horrible. Maybe, maybe Amy Chen, Emily Chen wrote a book about Silicon Valley where I lived for 30 years and it was called Brotopia, Ending the Boys Club of Silicon Valley. And it was filled with awful stories, which I'm not interested in relative to this discussion. But one of the things she said, and there's a key word in this sentence, is if Facebook had had a significantly higher share of women writing code, and here's the key word, the sensibility of the software would have been significantly or even dramatically different. Uh, you know, a, a, boy, a big room, of, a big boys club room, you know, it's the same kind of talk I had when I was a you know, 17 year old, and, but it's, it's really true. I mean, there's no issue in my mind that she hit the nail directly on the head. So you, so are you saying that there's, I mean, I, I, I'm, we're in the world of sweeping generalizations, that, that men are not all, but many men are kind of more macho and maybe mercenary and more power driven than, than women when they're in positions of power. Unfortunately, you and I have a short period of time because that's a sensitive issue. And I hate to mm. kind of use one liners. I'm going to not answer and then try to answer as I not answer. The research says that on average, keyword, bell-shaped curve, tails, uh, on average, women are better leaders, salespersons, negotiators, and investors. And there's enough research to fill up, you know, freight cars, whatever with it. Uh, and, and there was one study that was reported in the Harvard Business Review, and the, and the author said, and women produce better results on what we typically call the hard stuff, meeting a schedule, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's just, there was this wonderful research that I reported maybe in blah, 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 the little big things in 2010. It was research done by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and it had 
two groups of people who were assigned a puzzle to solve, not just a little crossword puzzle. I, I don't know what I mean by puzzle, but a, something that was complex. And it was a group of women and a group of men. Uh, and the people who were conducting the research were men. And they watched things unfold. And they knew damn well that the men were doing a better job, which turned out to be wrong. Uh, the men were doing a worse job over the long haul. But the men had approached the job like U.S. Army boot camp. They had assigned things. They lined people up. They gotten people working on their piece. And the men didn't even know what the hell the women were doing. They were sitting around and they were chatting with each other and it didn't look formal at all. And out of that pops something fantastic. And out of the men's, I guess there's nothing wrong with the answer, but it took forever and it was whatever. So when, you, when we talk about those sensibilities, it doesn't mean that on time, good outcome, the hard stuff. But your your point in general was absolutely correct. And particularly when you think about it, and I know this is true of a lot of our audience, there's nothing in my mind more hilarious than the notion of a room full of 25-year-olds making $175,000 a year and three feet away from each other in the pre-pandemic world writing code. I mean, that's just it's hilarious to me, the sorts of things, that, because the investor thing is really a, a lot about that. There's a woman who work, who's a senior person at the Motley Fool, and she wrote a book with my favorite book title in the world. And the book title was Warren Buffett Invests Like a Girl and Why You Should Too. And the beautiful thing is Buffett hadn't heard about the book, and he wrote the first review at Amazon. And the review was wonderful. He said, I didn't know I invested like a girl. But the, but the point of the boy thing relative to your question is you're trading something or other. And I'm sitting at a screen four feet away from you trading the same thing. Um, you have a hell of a good day. And it is now four o'clock and the market's going to close in 15 minutes. You are not going to have a better day than I do did. And so I start doing dumb shit. I take long shots. It's anything in the world, but I'll be damned if I'm going to come in second place. And that is all boy. I mean, that is called, you know, to, to, to use the title of a book that was disgusting. That's called Testosterone Inc. 